Good morning, all. Welcome to another in our series of interviews on cybersecurity career intelligence. What we're trying to do is take the mystery out of being a success in cybersecurity. And today we have a very special guest, Jessica Barker. And so welcome, Jessica. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. So Jessica is a practitioner in the cybersecurity field, but what caught my attention to her is she, she published a new book called Cybersecurity, How to Get Started in Cybersecurity and Future Proof Your Career. And that's what this interview series is all about. So I wanted to talk to her in the next 15 minutes about what's in the book and get her even more immediate thoughts on what's going on in the cybersecurity field regarding getting into the career, succeeding and things of that nature. But let's first start by finding out uh, what do you, what, what you are a practitioner in cybersecurity, what is your company? And give us, I know you're not in the United States, give us a little background on where you are and the kind of things that you're doing in cybersecurity. Sure, happy to. So I'm co-CEO of a cybersecurity consultancy based in the UK, and I run the company with my husband. I've been working in cybersecurity for the last 10 years, and my work has always focused on the human side of cybersecurity. So I work on awareness, behavior, and culture. We work globally, so we do work in the US, in Canada, around the world, a lot of work in the UK, in London, um, and elsewhere. And we at Sygenta, because I have the focus on the human side and I lead on that, my husband is an ethical hacker and social engineer. So he leads on the technical side and physical security. And we lead a team that therefore looks at cybersecurity in this overarching way. So we don't just look at the technology, we look very much at people and at physical security too. And I have, as I say, I've always focused on the people side of security, but if you'd spoken to me 11 or 12 years ago, before I came into the industry, I really would never have expected to be working in this field. So I was very lucky that as I was finishing a PhD in a totally different subject, I was headhunted for a cybersecurity job. That's a very interesting background because our master's degree program is also focused on helping people move into cybersecurity. They may be in something like criminal justice or even other uh, social sciences that uh, give them this human background as you're talking about. But so you, you've been working in cybersecurity for 10 years. Did you write the book for who did you write the book for cybersecurity, how to get started in cybersecurity? Was it people uh, that you that were not in the field? How, what, what was the genesis of coming up with this book title and book idea? So I, I was actually approached by the publishers and they, Kogan Page, they have a series of books called Confident Something. And they asked if I wanted to write Confident Cybersecurity aimed at people who are new to the field, who are maybe interested in joining the field. Um, and I decided to try to meet a few different audiences. So primarily I wrote the book for me 10 and a half years ago. <laughs> and so I wrote it for someone who was maybe thinking about cybersecurity, but didn't quite know where to get started or what even fully what the, what the discipline meant. And so I really wanted to show how broad it is as a field, how much it encompasses technical issues, but also physical and human issues. And I also hoped that in writing this book, it would appeal to executives as well. I do a lot of work with board members, helping them get up to speed on cybersecurity. So I wanted it to kind of be a book that would help anyone who just wants to know more about security and get a really good overview of what it's actually like as a subject, but also to work in this field. Get it because when you say getting started in cybersecurity, there are a lot of people that need to get started in cybersecurity. They could be board members, they could be new new people, uh, they could be people transitioning. So I think that's a good perspective. As I read the book, there were sort of two big parts of it. The first one was about cybersecurity itself, and then maybe the second one is about what kind of a career opportunity or what can you you know once you learn about. Is that sort of a fair assessment of what's in it? And could you talk a little bit about maybe the first part of the book first? 
Sure. So for the first part of the book, and I, I absolutely agree with that analysis, for the first part, I wanted to give a good overview of the subject. I think often when we talk about security, we can pigeonhole it either into just talking about the technology or just talking about the human side. I wanted something that reflects that we are dealing with um, a interconnected set of quite complicated problems. And I wanted to break that down for people. So I look at the technical side, I um, explore, you know, the OWASP top 10, um, I explore some of the vulnerabilities that we commonly see in terms of the technology and what those vulnerabilities are in, in simple senses and how we've seen some of those vulnerabilities actually be exploited. So lots of case studies. I talk about the human side, social engineering in particular, um, which is something that most of our clients see as a very large threat over the last few years. So I talk a bit about the history of social engineering and I talk about, again, lots of kind of different case studies and really what makes us as humans susceptible to social engineering. And I touch on the physical side as well. So in terms of kind of practical physical security, but also in terms of some of the implications of physical security. So global, um, you know, geopolitical issues and cyber war. And then I also wanted this to be something that would be practically helpful. So there's a chapter on kind of top tips for individuals, what people can do to be better protected, what organizations can do to be better protected. And if you are an executive or an aspiring executive, actually, what do you need to know in terms of cybersecurity? I think that's great. So as I read it, it gives you kind of a view of the whole forest of cybersecurity without going into super detail and everything. But of course, that's what our master's degree course is designed to help people do to drill down a little bit more into cryptography and identity and access management and stuff like that. But so once you've addressed that, then talk a little bit more about the second part of the book, which deals with careers in different ways. So um, what kinds of topics did you cover there? Yeah, what I wanted to do in the career side of things is um, open up people's eyes to the fact that if you work in security, you can be working really with any industry. So I do a lot of work with schools um, in the UK and with universities in the UK to help students understand a bit more about what it's like to actually work in the industry and the fact that working in security doesn't necessarily mean working at the government level or working just for big banks or big business, that actually it can mean working in the music industry because of course, music artists um, need to make sure they protect their assets, their information assets, their music. So I talk about Taylor Swift um, and what her team reportedly does to protect her cybersecurity. I talk about um, what cybersecurity means to social influencers, uh, social media influencers, to small business and big business, um, to journalists, to the media. So I try to bring to life the fact that actually whatever industry you're interested in, whatever industry you work in, cybersecurity is going to run through that as a thread. I also wanted to showcase some of the different jobs and some of the profiles of people that that I've come across as part of my network and in my career. So I highlight different people's stories and I have people including journalists, including people working at the government level, um, lawyers, events organizers, PR, people that have different types of jobs, but focusing very much on cybersecurity and what it means to them. I think it's really good because what my takeaway from this is you, you you obviously should be passionate about security, but you might well be passionate about something else, whether it's music, whether it's football, sports. So if you combine those two passions, that probably gives you the best of both worlds because as a security professional, you really want to be super interested in the business that you're protecting. And so I think your book kind of encourages people to, to follow that exact path and strategy. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I really wanted to show that, you know, some people 
may want to work in the music industry but not be a music artist and you're you're absolutely right you know you can combine that passion which may be for a creative field it may be for sports the media um, it may be for journalism whatever it is cybersecurity is going to be fundamental to that so you can bring those two passions together i think that's great and um we've had some of my one of my most successful students in the past was actually a community organizer before he went into cybersecurity. And, the, and that's a big part of a security program is organizing the community in your organization. And so he's like a director of security at a big company. So, but anyway, I'm looking in addition to talking about the different careers, you also talk about what should you do to get into the field and be successful? And you do say some nice things about university study, which I totally agree with, right? It's not just the degree. It's not just a piece of paper or diploma. It's all the other things that you might get out of it. But what, what other um, sort of uh, tools should you have in your toolkit at different parts of your career? If you're a board member, you're not, I mean, talk about sort of the different careers and different tools that, that you might need to succeed in the field as it is today, you know, and I don't know if it's changed because of the pandemic or sort of what's the latest, greatest uh, thoughts on, you know, succeeding in this field. So for me, I have an academic background. Um, I didn't study security um, or anything particularly technical, but I found it really helpful to go to university. I um, did an undergraduate degree in sociology and politics, a master's in research methodology, and a PhD in civic design. And I did find that even though I didn't follow those disciplines for my full career, beyond academia, they did instill in me lots of skills and a sort of approach to working that I found very helpful. So writing a book was a lot easier having done a PhD, I think. Um, but I think that it, it depends. My husband didn't go to university, didn't go to college. He took a, a route of, you know, getting into industry and self-learning and went down the technical path. And he's very successful with that. So it's what is right for the individual. But there are some themes. I think in terms of security, what suits somebody working in security is if you like a challenge because the field is broad, it gets deep in depth. So actually liking a challenge, liking something that is fast paced is, is very helpful. If you like to learn, then security is a great place to be. And actually skills that are more kind of about being strategic and being professional. So how you influence people, how you communicate, um, whether you actually kind of have empathy and are able to see things from different points of view, um, really important skill sets to hone. Um, but ultimately, I think it comes back to an attitude. If you like solving puzzles, if you like looking at a problem and trying to break it down, and if you like helping people, then they're all great qualities to have to develop and build on for a career in cybersecurity. That's very cool. So how do you keep up with this field? Any final thoughts on, uh, in addition to reading your book, which will get people up to 2020, I guess, right? In terms of best practices and best career uh, paths, um, are there particular uh, media that you stay in touch with to sort of follow the latest trends in this changing field or anything you'd recommend? <laughs> Yeah, I, for me, number one recommendation, particularly as you've said, we're, we're dealing with the pandemic, we're in a virtual world a lot of the time at the minute. I do find Twitter is the most helpful place to get news and the latest news. Mm -hmm. um, so finding people to follow on there. You can also, in general, find a positive community on Twitter, people who will help, um, people who will point you in the right direction and who will share information. Beyond that, I would say engaging in online virtual virtual events. Um, the pandemic has certainly brought, a lot, brought us lots of challenges, um, but at the same time, we can still engage in connecting with people, networking with people, and learning from people. And so one thing we can do is attend events that maybe all the way around the world at the moment. Um, and so we can actually maybe network with people that we wouldn't normally have a chance to. So I would encourage students to, to seek to do that as well. I think that's great. And if people want to follow you on Twitter, do you have a Twitter handle that we could? I, uh, 
follow? I do. So at Dr. Jessica Barker, and I'm always happy to chat to people on Twitter. Dr. Jessica Barker, thank you so much. This is really good. I, again, I highly recommend this book. If you're trying to get into the field, whether you're a board member or a newbie in security, there's going to be stuff in here for you to learn about. So thank you very much, Jessica. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for listening and watching and have a great afternoon or great morning, wherever you might be. Thank you. I enjoyed it.